Hello, gang, and welcome to another week of the Rec Poker Podcast. I'm your host, Jim Reed, Bluffsterini in the home game. And if you want to learn more about me, you can go to rec.poker slash crew. And you can also learn about all the other wizards on the wrecking crew. Um, in fact, wizards, why don't you introduce yourselves right now? Just tell Rec Poker Nation all about you. I'm Chris Jones. I'm 5 by 5 on Poker Stars and Twitter. And I'm John Somsky. I am Poker Geek MN everywhere. I'm Kim Kilroy. I am Fergie 56 in the home game and Pat Pat everywhere else. And like I said, I'm Jim. I'm happy to be here. I've got the best job in the world, hanging out with uh, fine folks like this and talking about poker every week. Um, and every week we are playing against each other in the nightly rec poker home game, trying to duke it out and get one level closer to that beautiful silver pin I'm sporting on my hat right there. And just like every week, we are going to take a post from the rec poker forums and talk about it here on the show. So this week we are looking at a post by uh, my Betty Michael, who goes by Les Paul 99. He's a guitar fan. Um, and he was joining me on Wednesday night for our online review and hang with a few other premium members here at Rec Poker. So uh, regular listeners will know every month, the winners from our home games get together and play in a tournament of champions. And every month we record the final table of that tournament of champions, because this is a spot where really the cream has risen to the top. And we later in the month, we take the video of that final play. We all get together, whether you're a premium member or not, if you're on the final table, you're welcome to join. And we discuss the action. We discuss the hand street by street. Um, we talk, we, we try and remember what hands we had. Some people probably used poker tracker or uh, like my friend Michael here is using his uh, QuickTime player to record the action. And it's a great way for us to kind of review our own play together in this uh, high pressure situation of the Tournament of Champions final table. So uh, Michael has posted here um, a hand that came up in the online review and hang. So just to paint the picture here, we're four handed and the stacks are pretty close. Uh, there is Les Paul, Gloves 1010, Fergie 56, and Keck Geek 65. And uh, Les Paul, Gloves, and Fergie all have between 35 and 39,000 chips, and Keck Geek 65 has about 14,000. So the Somsky ratio is at about two and a half, but most of the people have around the same stack, and it's just that one short stack, and they're not um desperate at this point either so i'm not sure the uh, somsky ratio will be too much of a factor in this particular layout so uh what we get here is uh michael opens from early position as early position as you can be four-handed so he's under the gun but he's also on the cutoff yeah exactly and that's the way people should be thinking about this is you're in the cutoff um and he opens and are we saying his hand here kim or are we uh are we revealing? Do do? Uh, all right, so we'll start this hand from Michael's perspective. Um, he's got the King of Hearts, Nine of Hearts. So I think that's a non controversial open, four handed, uh, and raises to two and a quarter big blinds, which I think is a fine sizing uh, for all this. Um, and what, how does the action go here? So Keck Geek folds. No. Uh, oh, no. He, the order's not so right. I see. I see. He, yes. He, he raises uh, in the cutoff. There's a, we're only four handed. Yeah. I'm on the button. I call. We all have three of us have around 50 big blinds. Mm -hmm. and, and there's one player with about 20 big blinds, the small blind. So um, this is a winner take all tournament. But uh, just so you know, nobody's a huge chip leader or anything in this. Mm -hmm. So. The uh, cutoff raises, um, and I flat on the button. Thank you. Perfect. Um, and then the small blind folds, and Gloves 1010, who's our friend uh, Colin Anderson, uh, makes a three bet out of the big blind. And uh, actions on Michael with King Nine of Hearts. And he says in the comment, and, and I do encourage everyone, go to the rec.poker forums and, and review this post yourself, because he puts some screenshots in here that help illustrate some points. Other people have put some great information here. I see uh, Keck Geek and Lefty and a couple other folks like Kim um, have also posted a bunch of information here. 
we'll do our best to go through it on the show, but you can get a lot more detail from just going and checking out the forum post. So uh, Michael says that he felt like this was near the bottom of his calling range, but he was getting good odds. And with a, a hand like this, if he calls and Fergie is going to call behind, uh, she's more likely to do so because she's going to be getting excellent odds as well. So we can talk about whether we think that's true or, or you know, a good idea or if king nine suited is the kind of hand that we want to have for that or not. Um, as it happens, I think Michael makes the call here and Kim does end up calling in position. So we get to the flop three ways. It's a three bet pot. Flop comes eight of clubs, nine of diamonds, seven of diamonds. So it's an interesting board. It's an interesting situation because when you're four handed, I think people's ranges start to open up a bit. And so this isn't, and, and, and the sort of, you would say that this is kind of like a big blind flop, but the big blind's actually the three better here. So we kind of have to recalibrate our ranges a bit when we think about who this flop favors. Um, right off the bat, do you guys have a take? Like who, who owns this flop given the action? Or, or are we sharing this flop? Eight of clubs, nine of diamonds, seven of diamonds. Uh, well, I think that, uh, I, I think that um, the initial razor and the button, which is me, have all of the uh, sets. We have all of the 10 jacks suited, mm -hmm. although that's only two, maybe that's only three uh, combos. Um, I don't think we probably have five, six suited. Uh, I don't think we have a lot of two pairs because we probably wouldn't be calling the three bet with that, even though I think the three bet was a little small. Mm -mm. I think the three bet should have been a little bit bigger, uh, seen as he's out of position against two players, but you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, so uh, the three better has all of the over pairs, of course, in their range. So, you know, we have, we both the initial razor and my, and myself on the button have all of the nut combos yeah. where I don't think that uh, the three better has any of the nut combos. Yeah, I agree. They and have I, all the over pairs. I agree. And I think that you in particular probably do have a bunch of those two pair combos because I think when the th small three bet gets called um, by Michael, you're going to be getting really, really good odds to come along with your own eight, nine or seven, eight um, in, uh, on the button in a spot like that. Do you think ranging Maybe, yourself? But that's only, yes, but that's only two combos, hearts True. and spades. So right. Right, right. That's a very small portion of my range. Good point. Run. Okay, now so the, I, yeah, John. you said that um, the three better doesn't have the nuts, but the three better could still have sets, couldn't they? Yeah, yeah. the nuts is 10 jack. Yes, I understand that. And I don't think yeah. they have that, but they still could have some strong hands. Huh? Yes. So they, you have the nuts advantage, but they still have. Uh, some strong hands with that flop. Uh, I, yeah. I, I would I would have 10 jack here. I would have yeah, 10 jack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're three betting 10 jack there. Yeah. Well, 10 jack suited, I'm three betting a lot. Yeah. And especially two callers. So I I I would, but maybe not not everyone would, but I definitely would. Also, uh I think a, most people a, would yeah. It's a four X. It's a 4x3 bet. Is uh, how big would you? That doesn't seem that small. It's not. Me. It's not a 4x3 bet. He only made oh. it. I, I it think that 1575 to 6300 is what I. Oh, saw. maybe. Uh, oh yeah, that is actually two and a quarter. Uh, maybe yeah. Okay. Okay, five. Yeah, so that does make it. So that does make it yeah, fewer, fewer of those fewer of those ones good call good call chris so i think i think we're all i think we're right that the three better call in has more over pairs um mm -hmm. and then both of the callers have 
a lot of the a lot of the the hands that are going to make either straights or sets or two pairs or or pair plus draw kind of hands here. I think that's that's right. Yeah, and I would agree that that the that it's very hard. I mean, they're going to have more jack ten for sure. Like, yeah, it's, it's not that common of a three bet, and and I I you know I think most people would only do it with the suited variety. So, me too. Um, yeah, me too. Okay. Four combos. Yeah. Four combos. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. So um, on a board like this, I think it's it's a good idea for Colin to check with his entire range out of the big blind um, as a three better, and he does. And then we have Michael, who's the original Razor, King Nine of Hearts. So they've got top pair, second kicker, no flush draw, um, no real redraw at all. <clears throat> and it's a question for him whether to see bet or not. So does anyone, again, the ranges are kind of weird here, aren't they? It's not a typical spot. Like I would say this isn't a... And I guess it isn't really a C bet anymore, is it? Because of the action preflop. Now it's just a question of him taking the lead again if he if he wants to, because he called the three bet. It is the kind once of once he gets checked to. Once he gets yeah. checked to, once yeah, exactly, to. yeah. yeah. Um, and it is a good board for that, and uh, and he does have a hand that benefits from protection. So this feels like a pretty natural bet for me, given the given the action. Does anyone want to advocate for it for a check or a different action? Uh, no, I, I mean, he has king nine, right? King yeah, king nine, nine of hearts. Yeah. yeah. So I like the bet here. I think the bet has to be fairly big versus two players. He makes it a half pot, which I would probably go two thirds pot mm. in this spot, but that's small potatoes. And is that a range play, Kim, just because the board's so dynamic? You want to bet bigger with, with well, your entire I think that holdings? You're only, or... What's he betting here? Is he betting right. and, and calling a jam or is he, so what's he betting here? He's betting his strong draws and he's betting his nines and tens and jacks and he probably doesn't have queens. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. So, and he's betting his sets. So he's not betting. And then he's betting his strong draws, his diamond draws, his straight draws, straight flush combo draws. Um, so I think with all of that range, I think you probably want to go versus into two opponents. I think you probably want to go two thirds pot and willing to, and with anything you're going to bet here, you're probably willing to call it off if you get jammed on. Yeah. I think this is the kind of spot where, you know, even your bluffs should have a lot of equity in it if you're choosing to put them in a betting range. And so you can always just, <laughs> you can always just check. Um, but I, I would encourage some people, they make this sort of compromise where they want to make a smaller bet with certain hands. And I think they're better off just checking with those hands if they don't want to make a bigger bet here. Chris, do you have a, a take on that? Uh, I agree with pretty much everything Kim said, except the calling it off piece. Mm. I think I'm making that big bet with the intention of some of those hands I'm, and and this is a really good candidate the one we're holding um to potentially potentially let go of it um if if somebody wakes up and jams now um i i i, I don't like my hand much now there are there are going to be a lot of they have i, I guess agree it, with that. and yeah and i guess chris you're saying that even the hands that we're ahead of, the hands that people are going to include in a raising range here, we're not going to have great equity against by the time we get uh, all the way to the river, right? Because they're yeah. going to have a lot of equity. Against I mean, this was, a, this was a three way, three bet pot. So ranges are already pretty, mm. pretty strong. Mm. And if we make a big bet here, which I like, I like, I like the two thirds pot bet. And I think we make that bet with the intention of uh, putting our opponents to the test, trying to get folds with our, our, like our nine X holdings, but then potentially having some of those hands like the nuts and like the combo draws, which we're just happy or sets where we're just happy to just snap call it off too. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is th that's the sizing I'm going to use for my sets and straights here for sure. And so that's the same sizing I want to use uh, for my flush draws and the pans like this that we're including in this bedding range, even though they're not a great hand. <laughs> I think they still benefit from being in this range. And so we should use the same size. The, the trickiest thing is is going to be what happens, right? When we get called, mm. um, you know, how do we proceed? Mm -hmm. um, which we're obviously going to talk about, but <laughs> well, let's, let's jump on that segue. So, um, Kim does call in position with a mystery hand and call in folds out of the big blind. So that's a three bet with what we figure is a couple over cards. Ace King is, is a pretty easy pick there as we were talking about before we started recording. And so we end up with, <laughs> we end up with, um, uh, Michael and Kim going to the turn. The turn is the king of diamonds. So we've got eight of clubs, nine of diamonds, seven of diamonds, king of diamonds. Um, giving uh, Michael two pair. And so from Michael's perspective, uh, the turn was a king of diamonds giving me top two pair. And now the board has four diamonds and three to a straight. Very scary. I was first to act and I thought about what Fergie 56's range was. I thought she might have a combo draw like ace, ace 10 of diamonds or queen 10 of diamonds, but I think she may have raised my turn bet. During our discussion Wednesday, most agreed that she most likely had uh, ace of hearts, 10 of hearts or ace of clubs, 10 of clubs. I remember there was a lot of talk about being like an ace 10 suited kind of a hand, which would have that kind of uh, draw it, that kind of draw, although I, I, if I know Kim, I'm not sure she wouldn't be raising with some of those. So what ends up happening, um, uh, what ends up happening, Michael shoves. So uh, the turn comes the king of diamonds and Michael shoves his top two pair and Fergie folds. And this is one of the reasons the panel asked Michael to post the hand. Uh, to find a figure out what did Fergie have. Um, and then there's some other great notes in here. Uh, maybe we can get into that later. People talk about ace 10, ace nine, lefties in there with ace seven, ace eight, ace nine. There's a lot of people putting you on these uh, pair plus draw kind of hands, um, Kim. And we get a great post from Jacob Kiki responding to this, uh, talking, uh, going in some great detail about the different streets, how our range is affected by it, and uh, basically figures it's, it's an ugly spot. And, and he was in the hand as well, of course. So he's a good sport here saying, uh, fun playing you heads up. I can't wait to play you again soon. So what is everyone thinking here? When the King of Diamonds comes, it's four diamonds on the board. Three. It's, sorry, three? it's three, yeah, it's three diamonds on the board, sorry, correct. And, uh, and three to the straight. So what are what are we thinking? What are we thinking about Michael's spot, and, and what are we, what do we want to do with our range and with our hand? I like his shove here. I mean, we're like we've got less than we've got like a maybe sixty percent pot size shove back. I I I like his shove. Yeah. I mean, it's putting all of the draws to uh, in in a cage, and it's. Um, He's got, he's protecting his, his equity that he's already got. So. Yeah, I think I, I might. And if have... he gets called by a, a flush, he still has outs. So. Yeah. One of the nice things about two pair in that situation. And just in case I, I confuse some of our listeners, this is on the turn. So there's the three straight and the three flush on the turn. Um, but there still is a card to come. Yeah, Chris, what do you think about um, what what our range is in that spot? Or do you, I know you said you liked the flop bet as well. Is this is this a spot where we have to kind of follow through just because of the? Yeah, I right? mean, it's it, yeah. Obviously, we we want a king that's not the diamond. That would be better. But yeah. um, we, you know, I think it, certainly. Uh, Kim should have some flushes now. 
Um, so we're going to lose to some of them, but there aren't that many um, that, you know, might, that might not ha have raised the, the flop. So um, uh, yeah, I'm going to get it in. And if you've got, if you've got the flush, you know, congratulations, but we beat pretty much everything else mm -hmm. um, at this point. So uh, I'm trying to think of, yeah, I, I mean, I think, I think we're, we're, we want to, we want to, there's going to be a lot of, um hands that are still on draws right now uh and we do not want to see a river if we can avoid it and, and our hand actually has some interesting properties against the different parts of kim's range that she might have because we're beating all the one pair hands um we're not even afraid of our opponent turning a better two pair really and a lot of the hands that we're putting fergie on here are the kind of one pair plus draw hands and we're beating all the pairs and we even have a redraw um, to, to boat up on the river. Uh, so we have a lot of ways to win the hand against different parts of Fergie's range. So I like that. I like that quality about it as well. What, what were you thinking, Kim, in real time? Uh, what were you thinking? No, what were you thinking when um, when they when, well, uh, for for his I butchered, <laughs> I butchered this hand. Yeah, you said I wasn't. You said in the chat that you feel like you butchered this hand. So I'm so intrigued about what you have because you keep so like I'm, I'm trying. So I, I think I'm influenced by I, what you're saying, but I have a guess <laughs> at this point, based but only by the fact that you said you butchered it. Yeah. <laughs> well, why don't, why don't you guess, Chris, just for fun, and then we can get get uh, Kim's perspective. I can tell you what I think I should have done in each street. Oh, okay, yeah, and then we'll yeah. Guess. Tell us what you think you should have done, and then yeah. maybe that'll help us narrow it down. I'm gonna. Well, I am I writing down. Really what I think tell you. I can't really tell you that without telling you what I had. But okay. Okay. <laughs> so I think that I think that uh, when gloves ten ten, who's a fairly uh, good um, aggressive player, three bets here. I have the type and that uh, the razor just, Michael just calls, it caps his range. Mm. And I think that with my particular hand, it's a good hand to just shove, back shove with my specific hand. Cool. Ace queen. No. <laughs> yeah. I, block, I block all, I block, that ace queen blocks all of, uh, call, uh, gloves uh, of all his three bets. So I have a small pocket pair. Ah, uh, and I have a diamond. Oh, so you did have a pair plus draw, <laughs> just not the way I, we thought. I have, I have, I have pocket sixes. Oh with a wow! Six of diamonds. Yep. So you had the bottom. Mm. You had the bottom end of it. So, so the, those those ace those ace ten with one diamond guesses were they were in the right neighborhood but they were on the wrong block. I think that this hand is a hand that is people don't utilize this enough, mm. and I think you can back all in this hand. You can back raise this all in, and put a ton of a ton of pressure on every hand that isn't ace king. Obviously, you're going to get called by a lot of over pairs, but not over. I mean, nines are going to think about it. Eights mm -hmm. are going to think about it. Tens are going to think about it. So, and, and I mean, and you're flipping here for chip lead uh, on a winner take all tournament where there's no ICM involved yet, really, um, with a, a, a small pocket pair. So I think with these stack sizes, this is a really good hand to back raise shove when the initial raiser shows weakness or a capped range rather, not weakness, but a mm. capped range by just calling the three bet. I love that. So, I don't think we have enough of these sort of like cold reopen the betting raise spots on the, on the episodes. So I love getting a look at that. However, I didn't. <laughs> I just, I just called uh, because I was getting all of those great pot odds, and I think that if the if Michael had folded, I would have folded. Mm -hmm. 
here mm -hmm. because really with these stack sizes, I'm not getting the odds to set mine. That's why I prefer the shove with pocket sixes, pocket fives, like that sort oh, of Oh, definitely hand. pocket fives, yeah, for sure. So, <laughs> so as played, I just call and we get the eight, nine, seven flops or open ended with a backdoor flush draw and uh, a backdoor straight flush draw. And um, I think this is probably a good candidate to when, when, when the initial three better checks and the, and the, and Michael. That's, I think this shows that he has exactly what he has, like a pair or, you know, probably just a pair. Like he's, so I think this is a good spot to also raise here. I think that, I don't think that a call, I called in the moment, but I think that's the worst play of my, that specific play here is the worst one. Of of my whole play of this hand, it was the the worst worst butcher that I could have, <laughs> and I think it's like regressing to be a passive player, which I used to be, and not to be uh, the type of player that I want to be or that I, <laughs> I I I would like to see myself as now. And I just like reverted back to oh my god, I don't know what to do here. Mm. I have such a good draw, but I only have this little pair and. Uh, I just want to call. And I like the call if we were 200 big blinds deep, but yeah. we're not. Yep. We're short here. And I want to realize my equity here. And I think this is a, a spot where I should either fold or shove on the turn. So. And, and, we, and it's interesting because I remember in the conversation uh, in the online review and hang, we definitely thought uh, that you would be raising a lot of those kinds of hands on the flop um, but I was thinking about it being like the top I was thinking about it being the top of the straight or or I wasn't thinking about exactly that combo but it's a good example of, of how you can have it in that range and I think you're right about that calling as a compromise thing right that we kind of like find tempting from time to time but usually it's the wrong decision usually we should be folding or or raising instead. Right. We just fall back on the call hoping we'll hit. Yeah. The odds are we're not going to hit. Yep. So yep. we need yep. to like push that equity and like try and make hands fold. Yeah. Like he would have had a hard time, like you said, calling the top pair second yeah. best kicker here on the flop. Yeah. No if I shove. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And if he does call, I have draws. So as played, I did just call like a little wimp and, <laughs> <laughs> and then the turn comes the king of diamonds, which now gives me the flush draw as well as the open ended straight draw. Right. And he shoves and I have, I mean, unless I put him on a better flush draw, I have the odds here to call off my stack. I shouldn't fold, but if I put him on a better flush draw, like having possibly a better flush draw than me, then plus a pair, then the fold is a good fold. So it depends what I'm. Yeah, and that's going to be hard for you to hard for I you to think, figure out in real time too. Right. I just think that I misplayed every street of this. Hand. Let's let's see if uh, Jonathan Little has any advice on how we can uh, play that hand better next time, and then we'll come right on back. <laughs> Have you ever wondered whether you should call a preflop raise or three bet instead? It's like you saw. What do you do us. when you have a flush draw? Do you raise it or do you just call? What do you do with ace king when you miss the flop? Are you tired of guessing about what the right play is with your particular hand? Well, my name is Jonathan Little, and I am a two time World Poker Tour champion and creator of PokerCoaching.com, where we offer over a thousand interactive hand quizzes where you play a hand and then get real time feedback from our world class pros. Don't guess and don't stress. Just register for your free account at pokercoaching.com slash rec poker right now. I hope Jonathan Little knows how much fun we have while he's uh, while his ad is playing. I get a kick out of that every single time. And not just because I am hosting a podcast that's sponsored by Jonathan Little, but <laughs> life's pretty cool around here sometimes. Um, all right. So 
Kim's decided that she's butchered the hand in every possible way, but she's come here to talk about it like a pro. That's why she's on the wrecking crew because she comes to bring the heat. Um, and I think, I think I really, I mean, I like the, I think Michael really played this pretty, if, 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 if you knew what hand you had, you'd have to say he kind of put you in jail on the, um, on the turn there with that sizing. And I think it's, it's interesting what, I think you're, you make a great point, Kim, when he makes that 60% bet on the turn, you are, you have a lot of equity in there. And how do you in real time decide, you know, this part of his range has a diamond in it and this part of his range doesn't. And like, I know it's just counting combos and, but like, I, I just imagine in, in the moment, the clock's ticking. Yeah. How do you make that decision? I think that this decision was for my tournament life. So it made it a fold, but we were a hundred big blinds deep still. Then I mm -hmm. have to sit and think about it a little longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, good spot. Good spot. I'm glad. I know, uh, for yeah, me, I found the. I, I liked your analysis, Kim. I thought I found it very useful. I remember back in like 2005, 2006, when I was playing, um, my style was pretty much unbridled aggression, <laughs> which actually worked back then. And then uh, had to figure out, you know, pretty soon unbridled aggression no longer worked. You just ended up spewing chips because people caught on to that. Such a so bummer. then I had to tighten Such up. Such a bummer. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> then I had to learn how to tighten up. But and then, but now I struggle with where where do I find those spots to add the aggression back in. So mm -hmm. I like your thought process. Mm -hmm. Helps me with that type of stuff. So mm -hmm. thanks. Yeah, this is a good one. All right, gang. Well, easy in retrospect. Yeah, it's <laughs> always easy in retrospect. I was saying this. I think Kim was in our study group last week or something. I was saying. You know, I'm just such a better poker player when I'm not playing poker. <laughs> you know? it's, it's so much easier when I'm wearing the coaching hat. It's just easier. And when you know what everyone's cards are, so there's something that just makes it easier. I don't know what it is. Maybe we'll figure that out one of these days. But in the meantime, I'd like to thank Running Aces Hotel, Racetrack and Casino, Website Amp, uh, Les Paul, Pet Vet, Chris Jones, John Somsky, Tech Geek 65. Okay, good night, everybody. See you again soon.